In this video, I want to do a simple one-dimensional kinematics problem. And so it has to deal with the fastest pitch ever recorded. It came off a top speed of uh, 45 meters per second. It was accelerated over about 1.5 meters. And if we assume constant acceleration, what was the acceleration and how long did it take? So there's this ball and it's accelerated over some distance at which it's released. It had a final velocity of 45 meters per second. It was accelerated over a 1.5 meters. And I want to know what is the acceleration and what time did it take to do it. But let me switch over to a schematic diagram. I need a coordinate system. I'm going to put x along the direction of acceleration. I'm going to say it started at x is equal to 0, and then it was released a final value of x, which is 1.5 meters, so it was accelerated over this distance. If I want to find relationships between my parameters to find a and t, first what I need to do is identify two specific points in time, t initial and t final. And here's a situation where that's pretty easy. The initial is where it starts accelerating, and the final is where it's released at 45 meters per second. I'm going to set my origin of time at my t initial, so that's t is equal to 0. My final time, then, I'm just going to call t. It's an, it's an unknown. Two things have happened here, one of which I've clearly envisioned in my head the two points in time I'm dealing with, when it starts accelerating and when it is released. And I've also now labeled them. I've, I've decided on an origin of time, set t initial equal to zero, and I've given an expression for my final time, which I've just called t. Usually in kinematics problems, at this point in sort of my brainstorming session, I like to put down a list of everything I know and everything I don't know. My initial position is, as I've defined it, given my coordinate system, zero. My final position is known, that's given in the problem, that's 1.5 meters. My initial velocity is known, it starts from rest, that's zero meters per second. And my final velocity is also known, it's 45 meters per second. The acceleration is unknown, that's what I want to know, but I'm assuming it's constant, and so there is no initial acceleration and final acceleration, it's the same throughout, so there's just A, and then there's some initial time, which I've defined to be zero, and my final time I just called T. Okay, so I want to find A and T here, and I know these expressions. That's now as part of the brainstorming point of view. I have kinematics equations that relate all of these expressions together, and I can play with some. I'll give you one clue. If I'm not given time, and in this case I'm not, and I'm not trying to find time, which when I'm finding A I'm not, the place I like to start is the expression that relates the final velocity squared to the initial velocity squared plus twice the acceleration times the displacement. And there's just no, I mean, this isn't some sort of law for me. If I'm not given time and I'm not looking for it, I, I start with this expression because it does not have time in it. What does this have? I know v sub f, I know v sub i, and I know the displacement. I know delta x, which is x sub f minus x sub i. I can use this equation to solve for a. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the solve section and do that. This is zero. The acceleration then is the final velocity squared over twice the displacement, which is the final position minus the initial position. And so this is 45 squared over 2 times 1.5. I can put that in my calculator, and I get 675 meters per second squared. I might take a moment out in awe in that a little bit. That's almost uh, 70 g, 70 times the acceleration due to gravity. So that's pretty uh, substantial acceleration. Check a little bit, sort of see, does that seem reasonable? Man, that seems excessive to me, but I might go through in a pretty simple derivation. I can convince myself it's right. The next step then is to go back and look at some relationships that might be able to solve for time. Well, there's a position relationship. 
the time difference in this case, which is t minus 0, once I substitute in t sub x, final time minus the initial time, is just equal to what I'm calling the unknown t. The thing is, though, that this isn't quadratic in t. I might, in fact, go with the linear equation instead of the quadratic one. The final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus the acceleration times the time difference. Now that I know the acceleration, I know final and initial velocity, I can do this as well. Delta t, which is equal to t, then is equal to the final velocity divided by the acceleration, which is 45 divided by 675, and that is equal to 1 15th seconds.